everybody, Edo here, and I am super excited because Steve Kyrus, a mobile developer and game designer, is reviewing Panamax. Now, many of you don't know this, but I'm Panamanian. My mother is Panamanian. I go to Panama all the time, and the canal is awesome. The Panamax shipping size and how the boats go through it, and all of the strife and hard work that went into creating the canal, I mean, it's awesome. And this is a super cool board game, uh, so check it out. Thanks. Hey guys, Steve here. I wanted to talk to you about one of my favorite new releases that's come out, Panamax by Stronghold Games. In Panamax, players earn money by completing contracts to ship goods from one side of the Panama Canal to the other and avoid fines that they might incur in the process. The game uses dice to represent the value of the cargo on each die and ships can hold from one to four dice. Panamax is for two to four players, takes about 90 to 100 minutes to play and lasts for three rounds. Players' finances are separate from the company finances and the player with the most personal money wins at the end of the game. Players can use their personal money to buy stock in their own and other players' corporations throughout the game. Players' companies will pay out dividends to the owners of their stock, but it has to come out of the company money, so players have an incentive to properly manage their company so they can actually afford to pay dividends. Each round, a number of dice will be rolled, and the values of these dice determine which actions are available for players to select. On their turn, players will select a die that represents the action they want to take, either moving ships across the board or loading cargo from one of their contracts to one of the waiting ships. Each player picks up contracts to send goods from regions like the eastern and western US, China, and the EU through the canal. Players will load the dice from these contracts onto their ships and take move actions to send the ships through the lock system in the canal to the other side. What's interesting about Panamax movement is that ships in the locks will actually group together. The locks can only fit four spaces of ships, and ships range from size one to size four. Players can move the ships in groups through the canal. If there's not enough room in a lock to move the whole group in, the group that's already there will be pushed out into the following space. Savvy players can take advantage of the pushing mechanic to ensure that the ships that they want to move are in fact pushed by the players backed up behind them in the lock. Players want to get their goods through the Panama Canal as fast as possible because goods that are left over at the end of the round will incur a fine, and that fine is per cargo die. At the end of each round, players pay fines for any cargo dice they have left on the board and pay out dividends from their company, if they have any money left, to each shareholder in their stock. So that's Panamax in a nutshell. Why do I like it? Panamax has a really tight meshing of theme and mechanics. The players really feel like they're running a shipping company, making decisions such as which ships to buy, where to move ships, which contracts to take on, and also the micro decisions involved in running a company like do I move this ship from here to here? Will I be able to afford these fines? The game is very satisfying to play, even if you're not winning. Pulling off an efficient turn feels great. For example, when you use your last couple turns to minimize your fines and ship your cargo and earn the rewards for doing so, you really feel like you accomplished something, even if you're not really in the best position to win the game. Because players' available actions are determined by the action dice, and the quality of the action is determined by how many of each action were rolled, each round feels appropriately unique and players are encouraged to be efficient about which actions they take. Because players are able to move anybody's ships and load cargo on anybody's ships, there's the ability for players to incentivize each other to complete their own goals and to complete goals together. After all, if everybody's company goes out of business, it's not in anyone's best interest. There's a number of reasons why you might really like Panamax. Panamax has a really visceral feel. The ships are nicely illustrated and they even have a flip side so that they can travel in both directions through the canal. It might seem silly, but in a Euro style game I really appreciate the tangible and realistic feel of the components. Panamax also plays best with three to four players. If you're primarily gaming with two players, you might not have the best experiences if you're playing with three or four. Players in a three to four player game get four actions per turn and the, each player has up to four ships on the board. Players in a two player game have six actions per turn. This means that there's probably more than enough room to do what you need to do in a two player game versus a four player game which feels more intense and crowded. Panamax also does usually take a solid two hours to play, so you'll need a nice long session to get the full game in. Panamax has been one of my gaming highlights this year, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I have. Thanks, Ed. Glad I could do a review for you, and I look forward to doing another one soon. And that was Steve reviewing Panamax. You know, play that game, but also, if you happen to have the time or the money, go to Panama. Panama is awesome. Beaches, city, the canal, they accept the, the dollar. I mean, I mean, that's the currency, the dollar. It is super cool place. Say hello to my family. Otherwise, you know, subscribe, share, all that jazz. Play some good games. Thanks. Bye.